We have been looking at different parts of a class, and that includes instance variables, constructors, mutators, and accessor methods. And in this video, I'd like to look at one more part of a class, and that is the toString method. But before I do that, I want to give you an example. And it's a rather simple example. I'm just going to ask you, if I said int x is assigned to 10, and then I said system out print line x, what do you think would print out? Well, hopefully you said 10, and you'd be correct. Now, why am I giving you this example? Well, I have two classes here, the Student 101 class and the Student 101 runner. What would happen if instead of printing out a primitive like X, what would happen if I printed out an object of the Student 101 class? Well, what do I mean by that? What if I wrote a statement like Student 101 stu equals new Student 101, creating an object of the class, and then I said system out print line stu just like I did with X? What would print out? It would print out something like this. Now, if you were to run this program on your computer, it wouldn't look exactly like this, but it would look something like this. And what is it printing out? At first glance, it looks like gibberish. Student 101 at 1A, 2B, 3C. What in the world does that mean? What it means is the reference of where that stu object is being stored in memory. And I know you woke up this morning and you said, I wonder where the object that I just created is stored in memory. Probably not. Let's then ask, why is it printing that out? Why are we getting this memory reference? Well, the answer is, what else is it going to print out? You have this student 101 class that you have created. It's a user-defined class. How is Java to know what exactly you want the student 101 object to look like when it's printed out? We have to give it a blueprint or a template or a way of printing out every time for every object. So I'm going to get rid of that int example, and let's focus on this stew example See if we can't make a better output than a memory reference. And I'm going to do that using the toString method. And the toString method is always going to look like this, public string toString. And it's important to note that the toString method is coming from somewhere else. Now, I'm going to explain that in another video. But for now, what I want you to understand is that if you're going to use a toString method, you have to write it like this. You couldn't say public int toString or public double toString or anything like that. It has to be public string to string. And now that we have the to string method, let's give it something to do. And so it's always going to return a string. So therefore, I've created a string called output, and I've said I've lost my marbles. Because it's a non-void method, and it has to bring something back to the location it was called, we have to have the return statement saying return output. So now that we've written the to string method, let's try to utilize it using the same code in the student 101 runner class. And so we're going to get rid of that gibberish line, which really isn't gibberish. It's just a memory reference. And we're going to see what happens if we were to use the toString method now. And for a second, I want you to be amazed because it's going to print out, I lost my marbles. And why should you be amazed by that? Because maybe we really are losing our marbles. I want you to look at that red box. Do you see anywhere inside of that red box where it says toString? Where are we calling the method? We know it's invoking the toString method because where else would it be getting I lost my marbles from? Well, that's the interesting thing about the toString method. Oftentimes, a call to the toString method is going to be implicit, meaning we're not going to see it. It's going to happen behind the scenes. That print line method is going to find the object's toString method. And how does it know which one to go to? Well, we constructed it as an object of the student 101 class. And so it knows to go, oh, I'm going to go to the student 101 class, find the toString method, and print out what's inside of it. An important note about the toString method is that oftentimes it is implicit. Now that we know that about the toString method, let's change it up a bit and see what we can do with it and make it a little bit more useful as saying I lost my marbles is probably not the best thing to say for student objects. And so what I've done is I've changed the output to be name, age, and GPA. And where did I get that from? I'm just printing out the instance variables. Doesn't that make sense? If we're going to print an object of the student class, wouldn't it make sense to print out a student's name, a student's age, and a student's GPA? And I've done it kind of in an interesting format. I could have done it all in one line, but I chose to do it on three lines. You'll see that the semicolon is down here, so technically this is all just one programming statement. And I've also used backslash n, the escape sequence, which just means go to the next line. And the reason why I've done it this way, instead of putting it all on one line, is that the way that it looks here is the way that I'm going to see it on the screen. 
So instead of saying, I lost my marbles, what it would say is name, age, and GPA. Well, why is the name empty? That's because when I used this constructor, name was set to empty quotes, grade to zero, and GPA to 0, 0.0. But what's important here is to understand that when you print out the object, it's going to call this toString method and print out what's inside. And in this case, we get an output that looks like this. And as I said earlier, the toString is going to be the template for all objects that are printed of a particular method. So let's say that we constructed another object of the Student 101 class and we use the second constructor. So the student's name is going to be Brock Lee, age 17, and GPA 3.14. And so when we print him out, it would look like name, Brock Lee, age 17, GPA 3.14. And so now we can really get at what is the purpose of the toString method? It is a string representation of an object. When you're creating the toString method, you want to ask yourself, what do I want an object of this particular class to look like? And that's exactly what the toString method provides. And another point I'd like to make about the toString method is that in some cases, you actually want to utilize the toString method. And so what would happen if we said stu2.toString? the exact same thing. If you use it implicitly as we've been doing, or if you use it explicitly like I'm doing here, it's going to do the exact same thing. Go into the class, find the toString method, and print it out. Just note that it can be explicit, but most of the time it will not be. One last thing that I'd like to point out about the toString method is what can go inside of it. Let's say inside of the Student 101 class that I wanted to add another instance variable and I called that variable locker combo. And if I'm going to add it, I probably need to add it to the constructor so that when the object is created, we can take in exactly what the locker combination is. And so I've done that here. Now the next question that we would want to ask is, because it's an instance variable, does that mean that it has to go into the toString method? Well, no. Would you want everyone who prints out an object of the Student 101 class to know what a particular student's locker combination is? And the answer is no. So beginning programmers think, what do I need in the toString method? Oh, I just need all of my instance variables printed out. Well, that is definitely not always the case. There are some times where you're going to have instance variables that don't end up in your toString method. You could create accessor or mutator methods alongside them, but they don't have to end up in a toString method. What ends up in a toString method is really up to the programmer. And so if we were to utilize this and create an object of the student 101 class, I could say Russell Sprout, who's 18, his GPA is 1.23, and his combination is 8675309. And if we printed it out, his name would be Russell Sprout, age 18, GPA 1.23, and nowhere to be found is the locker combo. So just realize you have options when it comes to what goes into your toString method. Let's bring it all together and first say, what is the toString method? It is a string representation of an object. We ask ourselves that question, what do I want an object of this class to look like? And that's what we're going to put in the toString method. If we don't implement the toString method, it's not going to cause an error. It's just going to print out a memory reference, which isn't helpful in 99% of cases. As we've also shown in this video, a call to the toString method is often implicit, meaning we're not going to see it. It's going to happen behind the scenes. But there are some cases where you can explicitly call, and you do want to explicitly call the toString method. The toString method is a wonderful tool inside of a class to be able to represent what you want that particular object to look like. Remember, you can put in it whatever you would like. Mastering the toString method is important for outputting objects. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you like the video, please do click like below. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please do subscribe to the channel. Truly, thanks again for watching.